It's a privilege for me, an honor for me to come and see your faces again. And I don't know why. You see, nobody is allowed to die and go to heaven without passing through this church. I mean, the joy, you know, is just like your hands out to heaven. It's not here. The praise and worship, all of it. If you don't pass through this church, you go to heaven, you be a stranger in heaven. You don't know what praise and worship is, I tell you. What a shock. And what a blessing it is that, I mean, the worship praise so lively. I see where my pot belly can go down. If I keep coming here, the jumping and the dancing. When I saw Pastor Nana, his stomach is flat. I said, this is what I've been missing. I'm going to be coming more often. Just for worship and praise, that's all. Hallelujah. And for all of you, choir, amazing, amazing, amazing choir. And um, for all of us, what a joy it is that we are serving the Lord. And I'm going to preach for a short time this, um, today, I'm going to try and end this. Because we have, look, I'm even more excited about this evening than this morning. That's why I'm going to preach for a short time. I'm going to be sure that I finish preaching before 3 o'clock. Show. You know, I told you a story of a pastor who went to church and preached and preached so long, it was not ending the service. And a gentleman in the service got up and was walking out. And the pastor got upset. Say, hey, why are you going and preaching? Bible said, don't quench the spirit. And the man said, I'm going to have a haircut. <laughs> pastor says, said, why didn't you cut your hair before you came? He said, when I was coming, my hair was not grown. <laughs> yeah, the sun was so long that he said grew in church. But I don't think anybody really had a haircut this morning. Shout your loudest amen. amen. So it's going to be a, a short service. I'm going to preach. And uh, when I finish preaching, I will end. <laughs> amen. 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 But like I said, this evening, please, for all the rice in China, don't miss the service. Very special anointing service, and it's going to be a blessing. I'm still getting on the track, Pastor Nana. You know, he's when I hear him talk every time I've spoken with him, the two words that dominate his conversation mercy and grace. Every time, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. You see somebody who totally depends on God's grace and trust in God's mercy. Many of us trust in ourselves, but grace of God will never fail. Mercy will never fail. And it touches me too, so much. Every time we chat, I notice it all the time. Bishop, the mercy of God is merciful to us. The grace of God has been abundant. I hear it over and over again. And I pray that these two words will dominate your life also. Come and shout your loudest, amen. Share with you from the Bible, and I'm going to read from John chapter 4. John chapter 4, and then we will be carrying on shortly. I bring you special greetings from my father, Bishop Daghiwan Mills, such an anointed and a gracious man of God. Pastor Nana drinks from him also all the time. He is such a beautiful gift to the body of Christ. As I, 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 he started the, our, set, our churches started um, close to 40 years, maybe 37 years now. Yeah. When he was a medical student, I was just a law student, and he started ministry. And God had been gracious and blessed us. Today we are in 100 countries Woo! and um, more than 6,000 branches. And we've seen God's grace like never before. Hallelujah. And I see this church. Moving with the speed of light, and I see your life moving the speed of light. Shout your loudest, Amen! And God is going to bless us. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. So today it's just a one-day visit. That is why you can't afford to miss tonight. But look at John chapter four, please. Have you found John chapter four? All right. Many of you use tablets. By the Bible says, this book of the law, not this tablet of the law. Amen. Anyway, God also gave Moses a tablet. The first iPad, God gave it to Moses. 
on the mountain. So it's okay to use a tablet. But look at John chapter 4. Bible says from verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, not by disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And now Jacob's well was there. This is therefore being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the wall, on the well, and it was about six, the sixth hour, that is 12 noon. Now in this short passage, you see, the Bible says that Jesus had moved from where he was, and he was taking a journey to another city because uh, for various reasons. But the Bible says that he, 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 verse 4 says, he must needs go through Samaria. Yes. Now, Samaritans in those days were hostile to the Jews. Mm -hmm. They were not friends. Yes. So for Jesus to go to the other, make the journey through Samaria, he had to pay a certain price. Yes. Amen. It was at the risk of his life. Yes. Because he was going to go through a lot of hostilities. Yes. And all sorts of things were kind of going to come up against him. But he had an appointment. Can I talk to somebody this morning? Amen. Jesus had an appointment yes. Yes. with somebody. Amen. So he said, I'm going to make, pay all the price I need to pay. Yes. So I can meet this person I have to meet. Yes. I'm preaching now. Yes. It's a pre bishop preach. Pre now, Bible says that he had to go through Samaria. He was going to Galilee, but I said, listen, I'm instead of taking a, 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 another exotic journey, an easier journey, a journey without obstacles, I'm going to go through this difficult route yes. for a reason. Yes. I said, for a reason. Yes. Are you in church? Yes. Are you here today? Yes. You know, I want to say to everybody here, Jesus is the Lord of the crowd. Yes. He's also the Lord of the individual. Everybody matters to Jesus. Go to never show and shake him or head tell the person you matter to Jesus. I said the shoulder, the shoulder, yes. And shake him until he falls down. Say you matter to Jesus. One more time, you matter to Jesus. Hallelujah. When the grand goddess like this, we are excited. We are, we are, we are, so, that's why, you know, I mean, we, we, we are so happy when we all gather, but as we gather, he's the Lord of the crowd, but he's also the Lord of every individual. He knows your name personally. You matter to him personally. Have you ever mentioned as, 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 as your name, and you mention and the next week he sees you, he asks you, what is your name again? Men forget, but God never forgets your name. He knows your name, he knows your phone number, Here. You are very important to Jesus. He will pay every price to have an appointment with you. He will go to every extent to fix you at the point of your need because you matter to Jesus. Push it every one time and say you matter to Jesus. I'm preaching. What a way. When I say what a way, say what a preacher. What a way. Are you still in church? So the Bible says he went through the journey. You know, sometimes, as I've been a pastor for all these years, I'm telling you something. People often don't know the price that men of God pay. I'm telling you. You see, at Jesus' time of the way, the Bible said that he was weary, he was tired. The Son of God was tired. I'm preaching. Are you still there? Yeah. The son of the son of God was tired.
I you know, Bible said, be weary, stand by the well. Yeah. Yeah, you see, he had taken a long journey. Yeah. Maybe he had been, he had had a lot of obstacles and hostilities. All things have happened, and by the time he got there, he was exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. People can see and don't know what men of God go through just to have an appointment with them. They don't know the time that people wake up in the night praying and interceding for you. As you sit in church, some people walk away from church without ever considering all these years you have been in church. You don't know the man of God standing for you, praying for you, interceding for you. One little, one little something. What's up with that? You didn't lie. And you walk away from the church. I'm preaching. I said I'm preaching. People walk away like the pastor is, a, is, 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 is an epidemic. Yeah, you see, this woman, by the time she got there, she didn't know the pride that Jesus paid to meet her. I've been a pastor long enough to see that one of the greatest uh, pains, uh, the, uh, that pains us is the spirit of ingratitude. Because yeah. in the last days, men shall be unthankful, yeah. shall be ungrateful. Yeah. Ingratitude is a universal sin. Yeah. I'm preaching now. Yeah. I said, I'm preaching now. Yeah. It's a universal sin. Yeah. People forget. Yeah. They forget those who are praying. Some people come to church, yeah. pray for you, yeah. help you to your, your life to be saved. Yeah. And every so many, your mother, your home, so much intercession and prayer made for you. Sometimes the person gets a call in the night, even at the expense of his marriage. I'm preaching. Are you still there? So when I'm traveling, I have a beautiful daughter. When I'm traveling, she's dead, I ain't going again. And sometimes it, 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 it hurts me. But I need to go and attend to others. But the same church members, sometimes, they will never be like that in Jesus' name. The same church, but after you are giving your very best, you pour your heart out for them. You be there for them. They can walk out of you like you are not want to step child. I'm preaching, I'm preaching, I'm preaching. I, I'm not talking to anybody here. Jesus needed to go through. There was an easier route. But he said, for the sake of this woman, I'm going to go through Samaria. This woman matters to me. Her issues matter to me. Her condition is important to me. I'm going to go through so I can meet just one person. If you're the only one with a problem, Jesus will say, come and meet you at your brother with you. Am I talking to anybody here? I know that on your road, nobody has a problem than yours. Everybody is perfect. You are the only person with issues. But I tell you that even on your road, Jesus says, you matter to him. Come on, clap your hands on the Lord, somebody. I used to see in church. I used to see in church. I've seen great men of God. Get so exhausted. Yes. Get so tired. Not you see, one of the things I read the other day was that many pastors die of heart related diseases. Yes. Yes. Amen. The pain. Yes. The pain. Paul said that who is in pain and I'm not in pain. Oh, Jesus. Sometimes I saw him in my office and they describe the issue and crying and they are crying. Because I don't have a solution. All I can offer is prayer. Yeah, yeah. Hold your hands and pray with them. Yeah, yeah. Are you still in church? Yeah. The reason for church yes, is not that every problem is solved. It's for it's, 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 it's well to have a family yes, where you can have somebody. Yeah. You can care and you, you can. You, somebody will have somebody to call. Yeah, yeah. People don't have anybody to call. Yes, I'm telling you. Yes, going through difficulty. Yes, you have two phones. One lady told me, Bishop, I have two phones. Sometimes I use my one phone to call the other phone to see whether it's working. Because nobody calls me. It's a blessing for someone to call on you, to check on you. It's a blessing to be in church where people care for one another. May God bless our church. May God bless me here. May we be a family that cares for one another. So yes, somebody. I love you, I love you by force, I love you by force. I love you by force. There's nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah.
hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'm not talking to anybody here. I've met men of God who have been driven even to the point of suicide. I've known men of God who have committed suicide. And yet their lives. It's not worth it. I met a person in Panama some years ago. He said, Bishop, I've tried three times to kill myself. Pastor, when it's time to say everything looks gorgeous, but sometimes the, the, the opposition, the hostility, the, 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 spirit, the spirit that rise up against him, he asks himself, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Am I preaching? I said, am I preaching? But well, may God raise us as a church. We know how to appreciate our pastor. We know how to appreciate the gifts of God. We will not drive our pastor crazy. Moses, because of, because of the people, he could not enter the promised land. Moses, look at the sacrifices he went through. Look at the price he paid. Going before Pharaoh and all that. But because of the stubbornness of the people, he missed the journey to the promised land. Moses, the great leader, the anointed man of God. The Bible said he was the most humble person on all the earth. But the people, the church members drove him to the wall. Drove him so much to the hill until he missed it. Church members, I'm preaching to you today. May we trust in the grace of God. Can I have an amen? And may God open our eyes to see the price that is being paid for you. Yes, brother. Fast forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pray. Yes, Anytime you call, yes, sir. man of God is there. Jesus. Anytime you call, somebody yes, responds. Jesus. What a blessing. Oh. What a blessing. Yes, One preaching that he didn't like. I see the pastor has not preached any good sermon <laughs> before. Yep. Are you still in church? Yes. Jesus paid the price. Yes, so as she sat, as he sat by the well, he sat by the well tired. Ah. I, I am, I, I am, I am, I am happy to know that Jesus also gets tired. Yes. It's comforting to know. That the Son of God also gets tired. Yeah. One day I was leaning by my bedside and I was praying. I was praying. Before I went, I boom, I was on the floor. I said, hey, what was happening to you? I was so tired, I fell on the floor. One day I was praying in the night. Up and down in my room. Before I realized, I drew, I, I, I walked right into the wall. I was praying for my church members. What a shock. But I'm comforted to know that Jesus also gets tired. It's encouraging to know that if I'm tired, it's not out of place. You are sitting in church today. You feel worried. The challenges of life, your finances, your marriage, your situation is getting you worried. Let me tell you something. It's not all to be worried because Jesus was also worried. We have a high priest. We have a high priest. Can be touched with the thing of our infirmity because was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. I'm preaching now. The high priest we have, we can be touched with the feeling of your infirmity, your weakness, your shortcoming, your pain, your tears, your challenges. He has been where you are. I'm preaching, I'm preaching, I'm preaching. I said, yes, such where you sit. I don't know who invited you to come to church today. May you come once in a while. But as I'm preaching here, you are you, you came to church feeling almost like giving up. You feel almost tired and fatigued. The challenges are too much. The disappointments are too much. Your failures are too many. The obstacles are too many. And you are tired. Oh, I will not be glad you for being tired. I will not be angry for being tired. Because our Jesus also got tired. Are you so bad? Pastor, my bishop, something I look at. So the criticisms. Such a good man of God. So that criticism. People say this and this and this. And sometimes, I said, 
My bishop is a good man. Yes, sir. How can anybody criticize a good man? Yes. So the criticism of people. Yes, Where is you? Yes, Where is you? Yes, you don't feel like one day one person said, I want to go to church. My God. The, the mother said, and his mother told, why don't you go to church? He said, because I'm tired. Mm. The mother said, you go to church. He said, why? He said, because you're the pastor. <laughs> what a shock. I said, what a shock. Are you still in church? Am I talking to anybody here? You got your neighbor, put your hand on the shoulder, ask him, are you tired? Are you tired? Have you been tired before? Ask him, have you been tired before? Have you been tired before? At the age of 28, you're always tired. You're always frustrated. You feel like preaching. But you're not going to preach. How do you feel? How do you feel? Tell your neighbor, I feel like going on. I feel like going on. I don't feel like resigning. I don't feel like retiring. I don't feel like sitting down. I feel like going on. So yeah. Get up on the seat and tell seven people, I feel like going on. Tell them seven of them, I feel like going on.
clap your hands for the Lord. Mm. Nobody here is going to be cut short in the middle of your life. Nobody is going to give up in the midst of the situation. Today, may God pump energy into you. May the Spirit bring energy into you. May the mountain bring fresh energy into your life. May God make you like a young, a young child. Energy is coming. Anointing is coming. Power is coming. You will never retire. Watch and see. Devil, watch and see. Somebody say, Devil, watch and see. I'm not quitting. Say, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm carrying on. Clap your hands one more time for me. Are you still here? Even Jesus. What a way. What a way. So don't be surprised if you get tired. Don't be surprised if your pastor gets tired. Don't be surprised. Because even Jesus, be worried. Be worried. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but somebody hearing me today. You came to check out of pressure. You didn't feel like coming this morning. But God has this way for you. There's a new day coming in your life. New energy is coming into your life. New grace is coming on your life. You will see what you have never seen before. You will go away now. Let God love you Shouted. You are about to scream like you never screamed. New desires coming. Shout it, man. You may be seated. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Sometimes we are quiet. We are quiet. But inside of us, the precious are so much. Paul says, Fears within. Precious from without. Criticism gets at us. Opposition. All sorts of things. So the people that you love, you love, can hate you so badly. Is anyone who can understand what I'm saying today? So I heard people say that I will never help anybody again. And as anybody says, I have heard that before. So I will never help anybody again. I will never care for anybody again. I know that because people that you give your very best to can hate you deeply. Amen. 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 Nobody wants to have given up. I'm telling you. When God told my bishop, give up. Your worker said, Doctor, come and do ministry. I used to go to court working as a lawyer. God said, hey, give it up. Come and do this. Amen. Sometimes you talk to people who say all sorts of things. So this church is because of money. Because of money, the easier ways of getting money. The easier ways of getting money. I'm telling you. You hear people say, as if it wasn't for God and for ministry, no one will have that infantry to speak like that to you. But it doesn't matter. Paul said that I'm the offscoring of all things. And that I'm the least of I am a nobody. God will make us nobodies for a reason. So we can say that this. But it's all time. I see God elevating you. Shout your Lord as amen. God will help you. God will be gracious to you. As a man, I, I know in Switzerland was a very wealthy man, very prosperous man, married, he with four children. One day, out of frustration, he killed his wife, he killed himself. The wife said that the, the, the doctors told us that how my, her father is always, there's a certain pressure. Sometimes the pressure that the enemy brings, if you don't have tenacity, if you don't have the word of God to stand on, that is why I'm not saying, don't miss it. 
Because the sun, when the enemy has told you, your life will be cast short. But the devil is a liar. God will extend your days, extend your life, and extend your prosperity. Show me yes, somebody. Are you so rich? Your smile will come back. Your dancing will come back. Your clapping will come back. Your shouting will come back. Show me yes! My neighbor, look at me now. Look, 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 look. Everybody, everybody, take out your cell phone. Take out your cell phone. Take out your cell phone. Lift your cell phone now. Everybody, if you have a cell phone, lift it up. Now, I want you to take a selfie with your neighbor. Take a selfie. It's a selfie hour. Take, take a selfie. Look at me now. Look at me now. Take a selfie with your neighbor. It's a selfie hour. It's a selfie hour. So if you are not taking it, take a selfie. Now, can I tell you something? Do you know why I must you to take a selfie? Can I tell you why I must you to take a selfie? Because where God is taking you, I said where God is taking you, the person you are taking selfie with may have to fill a form before he sees you. But because of the selfie, because of the selfie, when you show the picture, the doors will be open for him. I'm built by the grace of God, we'll bring churches there. For the past three years, I've lived in Nigeria. My is the most beautiful country on earth. I come from Jamaica. Anyway, that's there for the way. What a shock. I'm getting into trouble now. I don't want Jamaica to be upset with me. I, I, I'm not Pastor Nana, so I don't want any problem from Jamaica. I'm preaching. Are you seeing the church? Jamaica cannot be last. Yeah. Yeah. Always be first. Yeah. Anyway, Preach. you know, Preach. I'm preaching, I tell you. Yeah. Oh, that's how they get into that problem. Anyway, yeah. are you still in church? Yeah. The Bible said Jesus was worried. Yeah. You know, where the disciples are going to buy food. Yes, sir. Now, Jesus sent them out. Go and buy food. So they went. Why did he send them out? Because there's an appointment with a certain lady. If the disciples were there, they would not allow this to see that woman. Because in the eyes of the disciples, she was unqualified. She was a sinner. She was a disgrace. She was a shame. She was a disappointment. So Jesus would not be allowed to meet that woman. But Jesus had a divine encounter and appointed the woman. So said, these obstacles are moving them away. They don't move any obstacle that will prevent you from meeting Jesus. So be here, somebody. Nobody can stand between you and your glory. It does not stand between you and Jesus. Jesus said, I have to meet this woman. I have to meet her. There's somebody who has to, Jesus has to meet you. And Jesus will move away every obstacle. So that he can meet you. What a way. What a way. Are you still here? He sent them to go and buy food. Now, Jesus was not hungry. Say, Bishop, why are you saying that? Say, Bishop, why? I'll prove it. When they brought the food, Jesus did not eat. 
Bible says they bought the food and they said, this is, I'm not going to eat at all. I have food to eat that you don't know of. Yeah. If Jesus was really hungry, he would have eaten. But the reason why he sent them, so that he can have that person not touch. And that person can touch. that woman. So he can touch her life. He can turn her life around. Some people will look down on you. But Jesus will never look down on you. So you say, ah! You, but I see Jesus lifting you, using you. That people in this church are talking to now. Your glory time is here. Your glory time is here. God will lift you up. God will use you. God will touch you. You will become the delight of your family. So yes. Yeah. What a word. What a word. What I want to preach. I want to worry. Are you still in church? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There are some people that we don't think they deserve to meet Jesus. I told you once when I came here how my mother was pregnant with me, and my mother told me as I grew and I grew up. She told me that you see I cannot talk to twins, two boys. By the time when my mother was pregnant, that was the time that she was having issues with my father. So they decided that since the mind is not working, this child should be aborted. So my mother went to see a pharmacist who gave her some medicine to take. When she took the medicine, one week, two weeks, three weeks, the baby wasn't coming out. And she went to see a more qualified pharmacist who gave her medicine to take, who looked at what she had been taking. So, woman, is that what you've been taking? This medicine, when you take it, when you take when you are pregnant, the baby gets strong. It is too late to abort this child. If you abort this child, you and the baby will die. Somebody said, that one is too late, that one is too late. You should have killed you, that one should have killed you last year. You should have killed you a year ago. But that one is too late. It's too late. And you see here. So, the doctor, the pharmacist told my mother, you've got to keep this boy. So my mother takes me, no, no, she didn't take me. God kept you. God has kept you up until now. God has kept you up until now. You are sitting in church. Sometimes when you worship, sometimes when I worship time, I kneel, I'm crying. It says out of gratitude to God. I should have been flushed down the loop. I should have been flushed down. But somehow, some way, look at you sitting in church. You don't deserve to be here on Sunday morning. Once ago, a drunk cop like you. Once ago, a wayward boy like you. Once ago, an, 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 an outcast like you. But look what the Lord has done. If I were you, I'd give away a clap and a shout. Are you still in church? I said, are you still in church? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. My mother told me. He said. I couldn't have bought you anymore Jesus. because I was afraid to die. Jesus. So she kept. Jesus. Actually, God kept me. God and she, I was believe at the right Jesus. time. Are you still in church? Yes, sir. I grew up with all sorts of challenges Jesus. and difficulties yes, because I was like an unwanted child. Yes, yes, yes. Someone who was not supposed to be born. Jesus. Someone who was supposed to be an outcast. Yes. Who was supposed to be flushed down. Jesus. But somehow God had the divinity. Divinity had eyes. You are not sitting here by accident. Tell your neighbor, you're not, you're not an accident. You're not an accident. You are not sitting in PTM accidentally. Tell him. You are not here by accident. Maybe somebody invited you here. My name is E.A. Tisaki. I come to tell you here. You are not here by accident. It's a divine appointment. But you walk into this church for a reason. And you discover your destiny. Maybe it's called the reason Paul said that I may apprehend that for which Christ apprehended me. Why did God save me? Why did God reach out to me? Why did God preserve me? That I may apprehend that for which Christ 
Are you still in church? Are you still in church? We grew up together. Grew up with my brothers. Grew up also, also carrying the difficulties. One day I went to my village, my, my little town where I come from. My mother, the, the young lady, was driving my mother out of the house. I said, I'll build a house for you. By the grace of God, I built a three bedroom house for her. I had them move her through to the house. They rejected child. The stone that the builders rejected. So you feel like a reject. But you're going to become the life of your family. The life of that generation. The stone that the builders rejected. You become the head of the corner. You become the head of the corner. When you started coming to church, they made fun of you. When you started serving God, they said all sorts of things. But one of these days, they're going to see a light they've never seen before. Shall we hear? Are you still here? I'm going, to end, I'm going to end in five minutes. Can I have five more minutes? You know, Peter, have five more minutes. Just sit down and then I'll continue preaching. There's somebody hearing me today. You are, you are holding on to something. That is negative. God is going to break that thing out of your life. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus is the Lord of the crowd. But also the Lord of the individual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, when your crowd is there, they may prevent you from seeing this woman. Let me send these guys away. Let me say, can you imagine Peter the fisherman seeing this woman coming to fetch water in the afternoon? Nobody fetches water in the afternoon in those days because the sun is up. They fetch water in the morning, the evening. When the, before the sun rises or before it gets, before the sun and when the sun is going down. But because those times everyone will come, but the woman came in the afternoon because the afternoon is when there's nobody there. Nobody, she was not expecting anybody to be there. She was tired of being with the crowd. The woman knew that if she came in the morning, my colleagues will be, will be gossiping about me. Yes. If I came in the night, the young boys will be throwing souls at me. I come in the afternoon when the boys have gone to school and the women are all not around. She came there, just about to fetch water. And then a voice came, comes and says, Woman, give me water to drink. The woman, the woman looks and says, hey, how, how come? And Jesus says something, and I'm ending with this. Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who is asking you to give you water, you ask me to give you living water. Look at the best thing. Jesus answered and said to her, If thou knewest the gift of God, many of us don't know the gift of God. That is our problem. He said, If you need the gift of God and who it is that said to me, Give me to drink, you would have asked me to give you. Living water. Shout it, man. If you know the gift of God. Amen. Pastor, my problem. Amen. So people, when you have to give pay their tithes, give the offering, they think that they're helping God. Yeah. If they knew the gift of God. Yeah. If you knew the gift of God, saying, give me. You, you see? Everyone, look at your hands. Look at your hands like this. Do you think that God's hands are in your hands? God has a million times bigger than your hands. How much money can you carry in this hands? You cannot carry one million dollars in this hands. You can't. God's hands are billions and bigger than your hands. Learn to give what is in your hands to the gift of God. And God will give you what is in your hands. Why did you clap your hands for the Lord? If you knew the gift of God. If you knew the gift of God. I tell you, but do you know the gift of God? Do you know the gift of God? Hallelujah. Give Jesus to the woman that I, I just ask you for water. To test your faith. To see what, what, what you can offer. Because if you knew the gift of God, if you knew, ah, you don't, that is why you don't come for all night on Friday. Because you don't know the gift of God. That's why you don't come and want to say, because you know, if you knew the gift of God, if only you knew the gift that God wants to impart into your life. If you knew the gift of God, you would ask me. Yes, sir. You would ask me to give you living water. This Sunday afternoon, as we sit here today, you know, by the time the, the Jesus said to the woman, 
the woman who came in the afternoon had now left her port. She went to the people who ridiculed her and said, come and see, come and see. I'm no more embarrassed. I'm no more shy. I'm no more ashamed. I met somebody, I met somebody. What has formed my life? May you have a personal encounter with Jesus today. Show your name, somebody. Are you still here? Today is a girl, a personal encounter. But prophet asked me to come. I pray. And God said to, 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 for me to tell you that you want to have a personal encounter. There are some issues in your life you never told anybody. But Jesus knows about it. He cares about you. He's interested in your tears. Some of you, if we brought your pillows to church. Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. If we brought those you nice, beautiful ladies in the choir. If we brought your pillows to church and put a microphone on your pillow. The thing that your pillow will say, Kapo Shaka Bahataya. Am I talking to anybody here? Your pillows have seen things. Your pillows have seen tears. Your pillows have watched, have heard words. If only you can bring the pillow to church. There are some issues. You pick up your phone and you put it down. Because if you discuss it, it's going to become a gossip topic and a prayer topic. I don't know what I'm talking to anybody here. If you call somebody, they'll be too busy to even listen to you. But today, Jesus is the Lord of the crowd, not the individual. Stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. It's a brand new kappa here in the This morning, you came to church today. Oh, you've been coming for a while. But I feel that all of us as we sit here, as we stand here today, there's an encounter that we need to have with Jesus. Lift your throat up Yes, go ahead. 